Thank you. Uh, it's been great to be here so far, and actually, I think you'll find my talk actually resonates with a lot of the uh, talks that we've heard from earlier. Uh, Simone and Gina D. Um, kind of looking at how the arts can impact uh, students. In particular, though, we're going to be looking at specifically how comics can help in science education. So, oddly enough, our um, story about the power of comics starts in the Wall Street Journal, um, which, oddly, you know, it's odd because it actually doesn't have a comic section. So, uh, but they did have an article looking at the declining rate of students going into the sciences. And this is worrisome because many in our country believe that in order to be a global leader, you have to have um, a strong workforce going into the STEM disciplines. So that's science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And uh, it's also uh, a little strange to think, why aren't people going into these fields, especially in this type of economic environment? Because they are usually very high paying jobs, and they have uh, lots of job security. Uh, so when they asked one of the students, they actually, hmm. I'll get this figured out. Okay, so when they asked the student, she said that her reasons for not going into science was because she felt that her abilities just weren't there. And so this begs the question, is there something in our educational system that uh, provides a barrier that students aren't able to get the expertise that they need in order to pursue these careers? And so to kind of frame the rest of the talk, uh, I thought I would uh, bring in someone who's already thought about this issue, um, which is Randy Olson, who did this book called Don't Be Such a Scientist. And in it, he said that scientists are actually terrible communicators, because typically they're trying to communicate brain to brain, and that's not, in general, what connects to people. And so he recommended that you actually move further south in the body. So yes, you might be able to reach some people talking brain to brain, but really, if you can make an emotional connection with the heart, that's better. Um, if you move further south to the gut, and uh, where people can actually connect with you intuitively, uh, that's better. And if you can go even further and uh, connect with sex, that is even, that's the best. If you reach that, you've reached the gold standard of, of educating and communicating uh, science. So I thought what we would do is look at how comics can actually engage each of these different levels um, and be effective ways of communicating science. So if we look brain to brain, um, research has shown that visuals have uh, the ability to uh, promote higher order thinking. So students who engage with visuals are more likely to make, uh, be able to evaluate data or apply theory um, and not just regurgitate facts. So, yay, visuals are good. Unfortunately, students are able to circumvent this, and what they do is they just do the reading. They bypass all visuals. And so the first thing that comics do is they actually combine the two, so you are able to trick students into actually engaging with the visuals, because your text becomes embedded in the visual, and so in order to read the text, you also have to look at the visual. Uh, the other cool thing about uh, using a comic, uh, specifically with uh, communicating brain to brain, is that there's this idea of cognitive load. So normally when you're reading a book and it says see figure two, you have to hold that information that you were reading in your head, then go look and find the visual, interact with it, and try to learn from it, and then come back. And that actually is called cognitive load because it, it can actually inhibit your learning. And so by comics, they actually place the visual right next to the text. It actually reduces cognitive load and can help you to learn better. So even though they say brain to brain not working, at least comics can, can, can start with that. OK, so now if we look emotionally. So science isn't exactly known for their warm fuzzies, right? No one says, oh, I met a scientist today and I just really connected. Rarely does that happen. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but it's rare, right? Um, 
and what I find is when I teach science courses, um, in the beginning I have a discussion forum set up so students can introduce themselves to their, their fellow students and to me, and I ask them all kinds of very pertinent questions like, if you were an animal, what kind of animal would you be? And, um, but then I ask them to just tell me something else that they think is important about themselves. And about 10% of my class tells me that science isn't their forte, or they have some type of fear or anxiety about taking my class. And that inhibits people's engagement with science. And so what we did was we act, uh, sorry, <laughs> we created comics to introduce each week's um, topic. And so I have an avatar, I have a sidekick, Globy, and each week we cover some new topic. You don't really get a lot of information from them, but the idea is that it helps with making a connection both with the course material and with me. And what we found was, with students, that they report that they have more interest um, in the class when compared to other science courses. They felt like they uh, worked harder in the class and that they understood more. And this was just by creating an environment where people felt connected to both the topic and to the instructor. Okay, so now if you move further, and we're on our way down, so if you go further into the gut, how can comics help you with um, making science more intuitive? Um, so I've been doing some research with a colleague, uh, Julie Labarkin at Michigan State University, and we're looking at images used in climate change education. So this is an image that's put out by the United Nations Environment Program. And when we give this to the general public, what we find is about 60% of the people we give it to cannot interpret this correctly. And so that's kind of shocking, because if you look at this uh, compared to other types of science figures and graphs, this isn't that complex. And so what we did was we eye tracked it. And what we found was, if <laughs> <laughs> so if you are a novice, you are not sure what you should be looking at, and you are casting around everywhere looking for some lifeline, um, and you don't get much out of it. But if you're an expert, you actually know where to look. You, you zoom in on the parts that you think are important. So the title, then you go to the axes, and then you try to understand what a point means, what a trend line means, and then what the overall message means. And so the question is, how can you move a novice to becoming an expert in, in viewing these types of visuals that we've already kind of talked about as being important? And the comic da, 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 is the perfect tool because it visually moves you through. It actually scaffolds how you should be engaging with that material. So you could actually use a comic to train someone to use these important tools in education. And the cool thing about this is that, uh, yes, it will help move a novice to an expert, but what we find is experts in one field, just because you know your visuals, when you move into another field, you're just like a novice. So you're casting around for any kind of hope of understanding it. And so it's, it's not something um, that's just about the people who don't know anything about science. So this can actually be used as a tool for helping other scientists learn about other disciplines. And so talk about interdisciplinarity and connectivity between different disciplines. Okay, so now we're at the gut. Now it's time to talk about sex. So the loins. Now the comic has a rich history of uh, connecting to people, um, mostly 14-year-old boys, but it does have, uh, you know, like the capabilities. And unfortunately, though, I don't think it would necessarily lend itself to biology, but it could. Uh, but I think this actually ties to Jim's talk earlier, and I'm sorry, Jim, to tie you to the loins of the talk, but, <laughs> you know, the idea, <laughs> the idea is the narrative and the power of narrative to actually draw students uh, or, or viewers through material. So in this case, if we looked at this talk, we started off you know, with kind of mild interest and then maybe a little peak and it's, oh, he's gonna talk about sex, yay, good. And then you know, a decline when we go to brains. And then you know, we're ending with talking about loins. So, helps to pull people through the talk. If I'd actually started off with loins and then moved to brains, well, it probably wouldn't have ended quite so well, right? But that's the idea of the narrative, and it's actually called the narrative effect, that if you um, provide a story, 
They say that it increases uh, people's memory for that information. Uh, it improves their interest and lets them have greater understanding. And so the comic is actually structured. You have your multiple panels. So as you put material into it, it automatically creates a narrative for you. So it's very powerful and can be used as a tool for that. So, so far we've talked about the whole body and how the comics can, you know, can engage your mind, your heart, your gut, and your loins. But the cool thing is, as a superhero goes, it doesn't actually fight alone. It actually has a league of, of fellow uh, Avengers for, uh, you know, engaging students. And so I could have just as easily have chosen dance. And actually, if you go online, there's a uh, Dance Your PhD website which people interpretively dance, right? Their DNA synthesis, right? And so the thing is, each of these has uh, characteristics which allow it to engage people. So with comics, it may be narration, but with dance, it's actually about coordination. And, and by doing these things, you actually understand better your topic. And so you might think that this is all touchy-feely, oh, you know, this is what we should do to engage students. But there's actual s research that, um, that looks at what scientists, successful scientists, do. And um, Robert Root Bernstein at Michigan State University has done these studies looking at uh, the general public, scientists, and Nobel laureates in science. And what he finds is that capabilities um, uh, and avocations and hobbies in drawing and painting are highly correlated with people who get Nobel Prizes in science. So I'm not saying that, you know, going out and drawing and you'll be, you know, a Nobel Prize winner in science, but there's a connection between arts and science and visualizations, and, and that can be powerful. So if we look at in the, the general public, right, the idea of using comics helps to scaffold a system where more people can reach expertise in science. So it could be that we could increase our workforce in the sciences, right? So people like uh, this student who was at um, uh, Carnegie Mellon, who didn't think that her abilities were there, could actually participate and, and become valuable in science. But I have to say that, you know, after saying all these things about comics, I don't think it's necessarily the magic bullet or maybe the Superman that you've been waiting for to save your education system, but instead of like thinking about moving this small group of people into science, that's actually not the power of comics. The power of comics is actually thinking about how do you educate uh, and make a scientifically literate group of people, of parents, of politicians, of businessmen, and that is actually the power of, of what the arts and the sciences can do. So sometimes they call it transforming STEM, the science, technology, engineering, mathematics, by, by the uh, transformative power of arts. So you transform it from STEM to STEAM. And so what I would leave you with is that by educating the, the entire public, we go from just trying to be competitive in a global market to being able to address serious concerns in global warming, dead zones, uh, consumerism, all of those things, and that's the power of comics. Thank you.